Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Tiller's Bourbon Challenge. All right, tonight we're going to try something new that I've been wanting to try for a while. Uh, we got High West Bourbon. Um, it is out of Utah. It's actually uh, out of Park City, Utah. And, uh, That's awesome. I've actually been there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I lived in Orem, Utah for a year in the 90s. And just a great place. Do you know how far away from Park City it is? From Orem, from where I was living, Park City was about an hour. If I understand, Park City is kind of a ski resort type place. It, it is, and it was right at the time of the Olympics, and they were building it up. Yeah, that's very so. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, High West uh, Distillery came out in 2007, and they were the first ones to come out uh, to legally start uh, distilling bourbon in Utah since Prohibition. I could see that. Yeah, and uh, it's supposed to be really good. It's a mix of uh, different straight bourbons. Um, some of it's sourced out of Indiana, which we get okay. a lot of that. Yeah. And that some stuff. of it's sourced out of Kentucky, but okay. they don't say exactly where. There's all kinds of rumors of what it is. Some say it's uh, Four Roses. Okay. And uh, some, some of them say it's 1792. Okay. And then there's a couple of people say different stuff. So I, I, nobody really knows, you know, unless you work at High West. Okay. And uh, they just recently changed the label. Uh, it was called Amer uh, High West American Prairie Bourbon. Okay. But uh, people were getting confused thinking it was a different type of uh, bourbon. So they shortened it. Yeah. To so, make th it so this past year, them, right? they changed it to just bourbon, took okay. the American Prairie part out of it. Okay. But uh, as you can see, this is a brand new bottle. Excited to try it. So this would be a neck pour. Which is uh, when you first open a bottle. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's got that classic bourbon smell that we it like. It does. It really does. Nice. Pour it in there and let it breathe just for a second. Okay. Yeah, this is a. This is one that uh, they only sell in I think forty six states, and uh, we're lucky enough to be one of them. We're lucky enough to be one of them. Okay. And of course, well, that was forty three states. I'm okay. about to say because there's only fifty states. Forty three states. Okay. And I don't know which states they don't sell it in. Sure. But. Uh, ooh. Yeah, this is strong. Yes. Um. And I did read where a lot of the experts suggest drinking it over ice or neat, either way. But uh, the water, sometimes I'll add water to it to bring a little flavor. Okay. Which uh, I may try that here in a little bit, but. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. First sip. Mm, firm, strong. The thing about the first sip is always a little stronger than uh, you know, the second or third. Oh, okay. So you gotta give it second. Second. But immediately I taste a little bit of a, what I want to call the apple flavor. I don't know if you got any of that or not. Picked up on it immediately. First sip. It reminds me of what we had last week. Yeah. <clears throat> a, little, a little stronger than that, but. Yeah, this is a, a 92 proof, but it tastes a little stronger than 92. It really does. Yeah. It had a little more heat in it than I thought it would have. Um, and being blended from several different types of bourbon, right. it, uh, some of it ages two to 13 years, they say. Mm -hmm. So you don't know exactly what you're drinking. That's but, good. And uh, yeah, I can tell it's. Yeah, it's got a good oaky flavor that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I'm really surprised because what this smells like, it also tastes like. A lot of bourbons aren't like that. True. That's... Yeah, I mean, I can smell what I'm tasting. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I couldn't articulate that until you said that, but it's true. Mm. 
So look while I'm locking it. I'm really locking it. I like it. It's a bit <clears throat> stronger than what I had last week that I loved so much, but it's not yeah. it's not too strong for me. Yeah, and um but you know strong like a, enough for you guys, you know, oh, our, yeah. our group of friends. Oh, they, they, guys, they would they, definitely they, like it. They, yeah. But <clears throat> like I was saying, this what's called American Prairie Bourbon. And they just recently changed the labels. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they would sell for every bottle sold, a certain amount would go to uh, this foundation that is building a, a prairie out in Montana mm -hmm. to save a lot of the, the wildlife. And a lot of it, as you can see on the bottle, it's got the, the big horn sheep got, and uh, get the name of it, but <clears throat> that's a they're protected. Okay. And uh, it's in Northeast Montana, and so when they get done, it will be bigger than Yellowstone National Park. Okay, so some of the proceeds go to help this endeavor to, yes. to make and, this sanctuary. And I'm assuming wildlife. it still does, but uh, sure. I don't know if the name change changed any of that. I doubt it did. No, um, the but people, that's really neat. That's yeah, nice. The people that own it wanted to do that, and uh, that's good. they actually, what, from what I read, the owners actually visited Maker's Mark liked it a lot and they liked the area out in utah and decided that hey let's put one out here mm -hmm. now, well it was needed like i said it's uh, i'm sure that it was the first um distillery in utah because utah's not yeah not a lot of big drinking out there but park city's different you know that's because yeah. um, it's a touristy area like i said it's the first one since prohibition mm -hmm. and they started distilling this in 2015. So it's been out a few years now, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a lot of rave reviews about it. A lot, some people really like it, and some people are just eh, okay with it. But no one really don't like it, right? I, I, I like it. I like it too. You taste a little bit of the fruit in it. Like you said, the apple. Yeah, the apple. I didn't really taste any caramel or butterscotch. But and um, I, I tasted cinnamon. Well, someone I saw in a review said it had a little bit of juicy fruit gum taste to it. I'm not kidding that at all. That must have been their batch, or it must have been. You know, this is. I remember they had gum in their mouth. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. Um, I, I'm not catching that in this batch. Yeah, you know, I taste the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I taste a little bit of the caramel. It's not really strong in caramel. Right, it's not. But it's more of a fruity taste to me. Yeah. Um, and the heat is even out, just perfect. Uh, like I said, the first couple of sips, you feel it. But once you start drinking it, right, it mellows right on through. It does. It's me, smooth when it goes down. Yeah, real smooth. Mm -hmm. I um, agree. This would be one that I, I would definitely want to drink again. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to think what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, 92 proof. <clears throat> right. Really good, but it's got that taste though. It, if you like high proof bourbons. You'll and I usually don't, but I like it. Yeah, you'll definitely like this. Or an easy sipper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's I, exactly what an yeah. easy sipper. And I really don't think it needs to be over the box. I, I taste plenty of flavors all through it. Mm-hmm. Even, evenly. Yeah, it's really... Evenly distributed, the yeah, flavors. Yeah, really good stuff, you know. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm going to drink a little bit of more of this and uh, move on and... That's right. Add this to my collection, and <laughs> if anybody wants to try this, I, I recommend it. Right. Give it a thumbs up. So I'm giving this a thumbs up. All right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you being here with us again tonight, and please like, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.